Uh, my name is Brett Jukes. I'm part of the communications team at NASCAR, uh, and we are here to announce the winner of the Squire Hall Award for Media Excellence in NASCAR uh, that will be honored as part of the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremonial process in January. Um, we're very proud, and I'm personally very proud of this, re this award. Um, the media have played such an important role since the sport was founded in building the sport, telling the stories of our superstars and great finishes and, and all those things. And uh, I don't need to tell this group here uh, how many hours and, and usually first ones in, last ones to leave uh, to make sure the fans understand about our sport. So uh, it's personally very important to me. I know Winston feels very strongly about it. Uh, and our entire uh, leadership team at NASCAR does as well. Uh, this will be the fourth recipient. Uh, the, the award is named after legendary broadcasters Ken Squire and Barney Hall. And, of course, last year the great Chris Economaki was the third winner. Um, this year, eight deserving nominees were voted on by a panel of 19 people uh, made up of NASCAR executives, leadership of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, media, PR reps, and a few Hall of Fame drivers. Uh, certainly had uh, their brands built quite a bit by the, those who were uh, nominated. Uh, before I uh, get to the announcement, introduce Winston Kelly, who is Executive Director of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, also a member of the MRM broadcast team. Winston, can you talk a little bit about the Hall, this award, and, and the importance and, and what you've seen fan response-wise? Well, the fans appreciate and recognize that we as members of the media are the conduit of information to them, and I've always said that we have the most accessible sport anywhere by far. We've got immediate access to them, whether it's before the race, during, or after the race, unlike any other sport. And uh, when Brett first came to us and said that this was an award NASCAR was, was putting together and what he felt like it should be named, I, my reaction was it is absolutely perfect. It's just there's so many deserving people, and we've gotten great reaction from the fans, uh, it's in a section of the Hall of Fame where they can simulate being a part of a race, uh, broadcast radio or television. Uh, and, and the fans certainly remember and recognize the folks uh, that have been honored this far. And I think that uh, tradition is gonna, going to continue with this announcement. Thanks, Winston. Just a reminder, uh, about six weeks ago, we announced the, the 2015 class. Uh, Bill Elliott, Wendell Scott, Joe Weatherly, Fred Lorenzen and the great Rex White uh, will be part of this class. Very proud to announce that that uh, celebration in uh, January will also include uh, the 2015 recipient of the Squire Hall Award for NASCAR Media Excellence, Pappy Tom Higgins of the Charlotte Observer. Uh, Tom reported for NASCAR for parts of six decades. Uh, he's really considered the first full-time beat writer in our sport. Uh, he continues to contribute to the sport, uh, writing at times for the Observer, but also he is a member of the NASCAR Hall of Fame voting panel. Uh, legendary career and, and a great, great man. Winston, can you share some comments on Tom Higgins? Well, growing up in Concord and uh, you know being uh, in the NASCAR family, uh, my father being involved in NASCAR, I read Tom on a daily basis, uh, and he's who I learned about NASCAR from uh, when I went off to school for the one year that I was in South Carolina and didn't have access to the Charlotte Observer, the thing that I missed the most is Tom Higgins' articles by far and being able to keep up because, you know, back then we didn't have all the stories on the Internet. And the other thing that I would say about Tom, from the time that I got involved in the sport from a working standpoint in the early 80s, I always felt like the two most trusted people in the garage area from a journalist standpoint were Barney Hall and Tom Higgins as to how the crew members and the drivers trusted them with information and knew that it would be articulated fairly and balanced and that they wouldn't throw them under the bus, so to speak. And, and I think that's a pretty high company there. Uh, I can't think of anybody any more deserving professionally, but the thing about Tom, he has got to be one of the most humble individuals that you would ever know. Thank you, Winston. Uh, I had a chance to uh, share the news with Tom just not long ago. I'll tell you, he was uh, humbled and touched. And uh, through the miracle of technology, we have Tom joining us now via phone. Tom, congratulations on this high honor. 
Uh, can you give us your reaction and your thoughts uh, to being uh, in part of the NASCAR Hall of Fame 2015 class? Well, Brad and uh, Winston, uh, first of all, thank you both for the very kind comments. Uh, I'm supposed to have a command of words, but about the only one I can come up with to uh, fully describe uh, what I felt today after learning this is flabbergasted. I'm just an old boy from Blue Ridge Mountains of uh, North Carolina, a real small town called Main Burnsville. And um, to dream I would uh, ever achieve anything like this was uh, beyond my wildest expectations. I'm just, uh, uh, as we said, I'm very humble. I, I'm stunned and uh, pleased and every positive adjective you can think of at the same time. That's awesome, Tom. We're going to put you on the other side of the uh, the roll. I think we have some mobile mics here. Uh, if you have the opportunity to ask Tom a question, please raise your hand and speak into the mic so that he can hear, please. We'll start right here with uh, David Scott, appropriately, the Charlotte Observer. Hey, Pap, can you can you talk about the first time you uh, went to a race, not necessarily a, uh, a a cup race or with the Observer, but uh, your thoughts about that time up in Asheville? Hey, Scotty, first First race I went to, uh, I cut first one I ever saw. I, uh, in the summertime, I was either fishing or, or uh, playing baseball when they were racing at Asheville Weevil. I had all my buddies go, but I never went. And uh, I was uh, sent out there by a great sports editor named Al Jeremiah from the Asheville Times and uh, had no idea what was going on. I was lost. I had just turned 20 years old. Only went to school two years at Brevard College, and uh, uh, I was thrust into uh, into covering racing. And uh, uh, God, I met a cast of characters like Lee Petty, Buck Baker, Tim Flock, uh, uh, on and on. And uh, when they started qualifying, first car I ever saw go around the track was Lee Petty. And I said, this is crazy. A car can't go that fast. And uh, if it can, I don't think there's a man crazy enough to track. But uh, I was hooked that day, and uh, um, I've been hooked the rest of my life. Thank you, Tom. Let's go right over here. Hi, Tom. Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Hey, Stan. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine, sir. Thank you very, very much. In all of your years of covering this race, uh, journalists have always learned something from you. Who was the driver that you talked to that you learned the most from? I learned a lot from uh, both Richard Petty and, and Buddy Baker. Uh, Buddy and I became uh, uh, fishing pals and hunting pals. And we spent a lot of time uh, Traveling to uh, traveling to various lakes and hunting sites, and uh, we always talked. Uh, we always talked racing. We didn't talk about fishing, nothing. But uh, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from them, and I learned a lot from Ned Jerry. Uh, he was just. Uh, he is a gentleman, and uh, if I asked stupid questions, he would sort of chuckle and uh, explain to me that. Uh, that wasn't the way it is at all. So, uh, but but all of them, uh, as Winston said, we had the most accessible sport uh, of all. I also covered, covered college football, um, basketball, and when the Atlanta Falcons were uh, were founded, I, I covered their first two seasons. No one has ever been accessible as accessible as uh, the racing folks and. Uh, this was especially true from the 60s through the 80s. Let's go right over here, and then we have time for one more in the back. Hey, Tom. Hill Overton, WNDB Radio here in Daytona. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you on a very, very well-deserved award. You, you, you've earned it, man, and, and I'm so glad you got it. Uh, question. Well, thank you, Hill. I, I appreciate it very much. 
And the question to you, of all the races you've covered, do you have one that stands out as the most memorable and, and why that was, if so? Well, I'm going to have to give you two. He'll uh, call it a tie. The uh, uh, 58 Southern 500, which was the first big race I covered, three cars went out of the track, and uh, they ran about 200 laps without any uh, railing. Steel railing was torn down in turn one. And they kept running with no railing there, which uh, uh, look back on it today was uh, was an incredible thing to do. That and of course the 79 Daytona 500, which I think is the single most important event in uh, the growth of uh, NASCAR racing. Uh, you had uh, Terry Yarbrough and uh, Donnie Yeltsin running nose to tail for about 40 laps toward the end. Uh, the crash on the last lap, uh, the fight, and then Richard Petty holding off there, Walter made his fourth win race. Uh, most of the country was snowed in, and there was a blizzard. Uh, the race was the major thing on TV, and it was the first time it had been covered uh, live, flag to flag, by a network, in this case, CBS. And that was done at the the hist of Ken Squire, and those two, 79 Daytona 500 and the 58 Southern 500. We got time for one more quick one, if there's any, any others. If not, hey, Tom, congratulations. Uh, we look forward to hearing uh, more of your stories and uh, certainly more access to the media uh, as we celebrate uh, this great honor uh, next January in Charlotte. Thanks for being with Fred, us today. I just, I just want to say one more thing, and very quickly, Please I know do. you've got limited time. You're good. I'm honored to, deeply honored to have my name associated with anything that's got Ken Squire and Bernie Hall's name on it. I'm uh, always considered them the ultimate professionals uh, taking part in in our sport, and uh, it means so much to me to uh, have, have my name associated with theirs. I've known them for years. They're wonderful men. I admire them, and I consider them friends. Thank you, Tom. That right there was the, the grace of a legend uh, personified. Right there. Winston. Ken Squire, Barney Hall, Chris Economaki, and Tom Higgins, pretty much uh, a Mount Rushmore of NASCAR media. I think that's the way to close this conference because that would be the Mount Rushmore of NASCAR media. I would have to agree with you there. Hey.